Welcome to Intune Training. Let's watch Jake struggle with some graph code. Yay! Yay! I think this is going to be a group struggle, but so what are we what are we coding today? Uh, so I think we're going to go over what we had talked about last episode. Well, Does what I anyone really remember what we talked about last episode and as we rambled on and on for like ever. Yeah, I'll admit I definitely kind of was all over the board on that one. Um, but luckily, we did put together a little slide uh, that shows what we're actually planning on doing that kind of takes everything from the previous episode and makes it way easier to say, understand uh, visually compared to other rambling that I did previously. So nice. Cool. It's a good thing that we've got you to keep us organized. Right. Well, I guess we can switch over to uh, my screen here and we can take a peek. Yep. Bam. Awesome. So over on the right hand side here, you will see the first thing that we're going to try to accomplish is just going and manually creating a dynamic device group based on a custom attribute of PEPCAC. If you're unfamiliar with what PEPCAC is, Google is your friend. Um, from there, we're going to get our different Intune devices. Um, and we're going to use a filter on those Intune devices uh, to see which devices have less than 30 gigabytes of storage space. We're going to then record those Azure AD device IDs that meet that standard. We're then going to get the Azure Active Directory devices. We're going to filter on that for the Azure AD device ID. And then we're going to apply a cust that custom attribute tag of PEBCAC to those devices. We're going to apply a what? The custom attribute tag. Or is that an attribute tag? Attribute, yeah. <laughs> My terrible spelling in the, un in the app that doesn't do spell correct. Yes, forgive me on that one. Um, but uh, from there, obviously, the dynamic device group should then add all those devices for us. We don't actually have to do the, the work of adding them manually. That's kind of the beauty of that. Um, having said that, like, let's go create uh, that group. So we're going to go into, you know, portal.azure.com. We went over into, you know, Azure Active Directory. From there, we'll head over to groups. We'll do a new group. Waiting on the cloud. Um, and you'll see we'll do just a standard security group. And what, what do you guys think we should call this group? Any ideas? Devices with less than 30 gigabytes of storage. I like it's the original. Descriptive. Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah. I feel like we just lost the opportunity to do the less than Jake. But <laughs> I can't even think now. Um, that is a really long group name, um, but it works. Uh, and we're not going to bother with a description for now. Um, and we'll notice the membership type is currently set to assign, but we do want that to be dynamic device. And you'll notice that we have now have an option to add a dynamic query. We'll select that. And here we'll go ahead and choose a property. And based on what we saw in the last time, towards the bottom, we've got those extension attributes. So we'll do extension attribute one. And then we guys think equals. Does that sound about right? That sounds fair. Or anything that's not PEPCAC. I don't think that's going to give us what, you, what we want, but we'll do that. It's going to give us our rule syntax. Now, one fun little bit is you can manually edit the device rule syntax if you want to, um, but this flow up here will automatically generate it for you if you want. Um, but that looks good. I hope, did I misspell anything? I think we're good. We'll find out later. So we'll save that and we'll go ahead and hit create. Every time you write something, it's an adventure, Jake. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked you guys stick around to help me out here. We're, we're just here for watching this episode <laughs> of Watching Jake Struggle. So. It, it really is a, a tough time sometimes. But... I'm mostly disappointed that you did that chart without us on the call so that we could heckle you through that. Oh, I thought you guys were able to fully understand my uh, mumbo jumbo from last time. So. But having said that, um, we did open up uh, VS Code here. I have the script that we created previously on, a, I think, episode five, actually. Um, but I've gotten rid of a lot of the comments, and I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of the stuff that we don't need to necessarily worry about um, to at least get us started. So we still have like our authentication parameters. Um, we're going to get that access token, the headers that we're going to need later. Um, and then we got our method and URI from the previous one. 
Um, so, I mean, like we, we already created the dynamic device group earlier, so we're good there. So now we kind of need to get our Intune devices. Um, and I believe I actually already have a page up for like listing the managed devices. I mean, we've done this before, again, on a previous episode. Um, but we are going to go ahead and get in that device management, manage devices category. So let's go ahead and do a get method here. And the URIs, well, you got what? H and actually, let's just go copy and paste it from that page. So I don't do any more spelling mistakes. Do -do -do -do. Oh, that's cheating. Come on. Well, I almost forgot the H, so it could have been a spelling mistake. But I also don't want to use V1. I'm, I'm like in beta, so. So we're going to get the managed devices with that once we do our actual invoke uh, rest method. Um, however, you know, so we've got, uh, where is it? This bit. But we also want to add the filter to this as well. So we're not doing, you know, t we're not getting all the devices and then filtering it. We want to just filter it all at once. So from that section, we'll then do, what, what was it, Sean? I believe a question mark for, to start the filters, right? Yeah, yeah. And if I recall correctly um, from the previous episode, it was free storage space in bytes. Is that right? Yes, and it is case sensitive, so that looks about yeah. right. You got it. With our fancy camel case, so that looks good. Um, but then it was also, it was less than 30 gigabytes. Well, we don't necessarily less have. than or equal so it should be le yeah but we don't have any value yet that's associated with what that number should be so we probably should do that um i'm terrible with math offhand uh anyone got a oh plan? do i have a handy trick for you so create a variable called bytes yep and it equals 30 gb forward slash one so what this will do is this will Calculate for you how many bytes are in 30 gigabytes. So you could, for example, do 30 GB forward slash 1 MB. That will call, tell you how many megabytes are in 30 gigabytes. I'm kind of curious to see what this uh, runs to. Where is my beautiful run now button? <gasps> it's gone. Did you lose your F8 key? I think so. Let me. I've never, <gasps> I've never seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I can copy paste. It's not the end of the world. But let's see what that ends up being. Ta -da! Oh, yeah, that looks right. I like that it actually does it in 1024 and it doesn't just shorthand it to 1000. You guys didn't actually know that off the top of your head? No, I'm sorry. I was never really good at math at school, but let's not talk about that. Bad memories. Uh, so we've got our less than or equal to here. Uh, so then we can just throw in that value of bytes that we created. So that makes sense. Like that's going to get us, you know, once we actually do our invoke rest method, uh, all the devices that have free storage space less than, you know, that number of bytes. Um, you know, what is that? Got like our sections of three something billion million yeah. whatever lots exactly <laughs> lots, lots lots of bytes. bytes so let's like let's get that so we're gonna get a list of our devices um equals invoke rest method the method being what we talked about earlier um so we have method get up here uh uri And then we can obviously got to include our headers as well. Yeah, and just to kind of recall back to our last video again, that's these are the managed devices we're getting. So these are the actual Intune device objects. Correct. Yep. Um, I mean, let's kind of like let's test this out right away. Um, let me go ahead and run. Yes, let's paste that in there. Oh, and of course, let's you know actually install the MSOL module. Um, you guys know the MSOL module off the top? MSOL.ps. Hey, I knew something. Where would we be without you? 
cool. All right, now let's do it. Mm. Oh. Same. Maybe you should just reload VS Code to get your fancy button again. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Let's save this to our desktop. One day I'll turn UAC off. But that is not this day. No, it is not. It is, is so it's awesome. bothering me that it's not there. Uh, what if you expand it like so it's full screen? Does it show up? No. What? Interesting. I'll explore that later. I'm not too concerned with it. I can do copy paste. But let's go uh, find. Let's go to Google because I know it's going to default to Bing. Ah, you were right, Sean. Of course, I'm trash right. all these. I'm always new right. terminal paste. We'll do this one at a time. All right, we'll try doing the import. Ha ha. This is a great time to remind everyone that this was re recorded in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> we have success. Let's go ahead, grab that. Oh, it didn't yell at us. Oh, it's you know, I might actually have to like do the auth bit first. I'm getting ahead <laughs> of myself. Man is a wiggle. Cool. Now I can run my access token bit. Let's grab the headers as well. You can grab all of three of these right away. Do not ask me again. That's fine. And then we'll try to run that right away and see what we get. Play the waiting game. Let's return devices. Hey, we got devices. Two cool. of them. So let's do devices.value and see like what's actually in there. Ooh, a lot. Let's do devices value and just grab the first one. So we've got a ton of stuff here. And we wanted to get what? The Azure AD device ID? Yeah, and this is by free storage space and bytes, right? Yeah. So let's see what we get returned here looks like we got two ids uh so that looks good so i mean that was pretty painless as far as getting the intune devices so we and now do we, uh, do we just want to scroll up real quick and just double check ourselves to make sure that we got our oh yeah good point well actually we can do this even a little bit easier and just do we have the power and again Ooh. Hey, zero. Zero is definitely less than 30. Yeah. And if I recall correctly, that would be one of Steve's wonderful surface uh, hubs that he has. So that's why that's reporting incorrectly. The other device is going to be one of Adam's devices, which is a latitude, it looks like here. Um, and here we can actually see free storage space and bytes. You know, three is uh, definitely greater than two. Um, and it looks about to the same length. So that looks right there. But so uh, realistically, there's really one, but we there is the second one because there is kind of a, a funny other device in the environment here. But I mean, based on where we're at now in the chart, you know, we, we've successfully recorded, you know, the Azure AD uh, devices. 
Um, you know, with that though, let's actually create um just a group that has just these values because we don't need all the extra you know information hey. that's there right hey jake in the upper right corner like with the run selection usually can you right click on those dots no oh okay so your editor is really broken yep doesn't surprise me hey, you're in restricted mode can you uh is that what your issue is? Where do you see uh, that? Lower left corner. Ooh, Ooh that's a good call. That. Ooh. Yep, trust. Oh. Yeah, you can go back to your file. Welcome to oh, VSCO.training. Woo! woo! Awesome. Yay! Learning something new every day. I like that. That's crowdsourcing right there. You know me. I'm totally coding on this box all of the time. Uh, <laughs> that's why it's got all my extensions and everything. But uh, as we were saying, you know, we kind of want to have a list that just has those values in it as opposed to, like, all of the extra data because we don't really need anything else. We just need that Azure AD device ID. Um, so we can kind of, like, query that or filter it a little bit more. Um, and you guys can give me a hard time about how I do this, but this is how I was always taught, although self-taught for the most part. But I'm going to create a new array of an empty array of query devices. And we're going to say for each, uh, you know, device in devices, and we're going to do device to add equals device dot value dot azure ad device id and you saw me do that earlier down here in the actual powershell window when i was trying to get just the values for that i don't think yep. that the d has the d is lowercase uh, at the end gotcha yep that makes sense since that's just the beginning of it and i think the d in 80 is uppercase yes i think you are correct. I, for the audience, I totally just remembered that off the top of my head. Totally. That is totally off the top of your head. I saw you totally remembering that. Well, well from there, uh, we've got our devices to add. Uh, the first device, we're going to grab that Azure AD device ID. Then we're going to grab that empty array, and we're just going to basically add that device to add to it. Yeah. And then at the end, we should be able to just run query devices and see just those two values appear. Um, so really, like realistically, let's go ahead and run this really quick. Now that we have the power, until it complains about me needing to install MSOL. Oh, no. I, well, look at that. Also, I think you ran the whole thing rather than just the selection. Yeah. Did I? And I don't think you actually ran the part that we wanted to add. Well, I need to redo everything. Like reauthenticate. Oh, everything. I see. Yeah. I sometimes know what I'm talking about, guys. I swear. Yeah, that looks like I did it okay. Yeah. We'll run I, I thought you were trying to get the whole thing in there, though. So I... And you just ran the whole thing oh, again. Oh, I did again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do that. Which this. means you probably right. already have queried devices. There we go. Woo Beautiful. So we've got just those values. So we're already, like, we're cranking along here pretty quickly. That's not bad. Um, so then next, what, what we need to get this, uh, let's get the, the fancy zoom it tools out. We need to get our Azure AD devices um, based on the device ID that we had captured here previously. So let's go ahead. I'm going to let's let's figure out what our URI is going to be, first of all. And again, my fancy variable names, URI2 because the second one that we're going to use. I mean, you could um, just change the value of URI as well, but yeah. I could, I could, but I'm incredibly lazy right now as far as that's concerned. Um, but what was it to, let's see, graph list uh, Azure mm -hmm. AD devices. Yeah, and so I think this time we're just going to query the actual devices endpoint, right? Yeah get devices hey look at that because that gets devices from 
uh, Azure Active Directory, not from Intune. Mm -hmm. And fun fact, um, if I recall correctly, there was a special permission that we actually needed uh, for this. Oh, that's right. Let me go double check inside of our app here. Azure Active Directory, Enterprise, Applications. Where is Ben is a wiggle? Uh, Not enterprise, forgive me. Yeah, app registrations. You were all excited to. I was. You I had was a little really Shatner excited. thing going on. So you said enterprise and. Ben is a wiggle. Uh, API permissions. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that we can see it. There we go. Mm, no, we don't have it yet. There yet. Uh, if I recall correctly, it was the directory permission that we actually needed. Correct me if no, I'm wrong, yeah. though. I believe you're right. You could you could run it and see if it fails on you. And then... Yeah, we'll leave it out for right now, yeah. and we'll see what we end up getting. Um, but we'll go ahead and grab this URL. We'll paste that in, and we're going to switch to beta. If you were ever curious, remember when we did that F12 episode? What do you think Microsoft uses? The beta. Beta. The beta. Not big fans on the V1, uh, which they say is what you're supposed to use. But nonetheless, um, so that should get us our devices. And I mean, we do want to filter on that. But before we try doing all the filter logic, I think we should probably see, like, does it actually work? Oh, uh -huh. that's true, because we know that we're missing a permission. Yeah. So, uh, again, with my fancy um, naming scheme here, we'll do this equals invoke rest method method. Same method as before, so we can do that again. URI, URI2. Oh, my lord. I cannot yeah. write. Your herders. It is it is a long day. I apologize. But we should be able to just run this and run selection. Oh, it actually looks like that went through. Let's see. I might have been wrong. It's not the first time and it's not the last time. Hey. Um, Now, what is the value? Was that the one that failed for us before? This. Or was it the next one that failed for us before? Mm. Well, that's a whole lot of devices. We might not, I, I think we might not have been able to patch. I think that might sound correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot Ooh. more than two devices in there now. That took a while. Well, <laughs> yeah, because we're grabbing every single device that's there. And uh, as we can go and, and see. Um, not an Intune. We do a fantastic job at actually cleaning up our uh, tenant with all of our devices. Fun fact as well, just because you delete a device inside of Intune does not mean that it deletes from Azure AD since they are two separate entities, essentially. Um, so we always need to, we need to do a little cleanup there at some point in the future. But that's why it took so long for it to come back to us. Which is also why we really want to use a filter so that we don't get all that extra information. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. Like, let's let's figure out uh, what our filter is really gonna be. Um, now, if I remember correctly, we have well, to. We go... have already captured in a variable all the devices that we want. The query uh, on the Intune well. side, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and we want to filter off of that, right? Yes. Yep. So, and if I remember correctly, we do good old question mark. Yeah. But for filters, you have to do, like, you have to physically type out, like, a uh, filter like that, right? Yeah. But that's going to make it a variable. Yeah. So, I think, well, we want to backtick here so it doesn't yeah. become a variable. Does that well, sound right? Escape character in there. That works. And then we'll do device I and then lowercase d, right? Yep. Yep. Equals. And then I'm gonna do well, we'll get a little bit fancy here. Uh 
because eventually what we're going to end up doing, we're going to grab that AAD device. Now you'll see we created uh, the do, 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 do query devices, but we're going to throw this in a another one of these for each loops. So I'm going to add that up here at the top. So let's say what for each AAD device, which I had put in the actual URI here. Yeah, we're going to do in and then that query devices uh, array that we had created. We will then pop that down in there. So it's all inside of the for each loop. Um, and we're going to do, you know, the URI every single time we run this. It's going to filter based on that individual AAD device ID. And the AAD device query is going to run the invoke rest method based on what we all have here. That looks good, right? Everyone following along so far? Or am I like no, going no. off the rails? Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. So we're going to do, we're going to grab the device. We'll do like, you know, device queue, something like that. Again, I have fantastic naming sense when it comes to variable. Where the crap did you come up with your, your very my, my madness, you know, the method to the madness a little bit. Um, I don't I'm know. just glad you managed to convince you not to use quits for I, uh, oh, oh I can we can do this. Um <laughs> want to. I'll get just as confused, but we could we can definitely <laughs> randomize quits if you want. Um, but <laughs> we're gonna grab that uh that that query device, uh the ID from it. Um, and then I really ready. think that in the in, in the interest of how everybody uses Windows, we should have called that AAD device query dash copy parentheses two, just like oh, your file name. Yeah. No, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> it's even more confusing than it already is. <laughs> Um, so that Azure AD device uh, that we gather, we just want the ID from it. We don't care about all the extra information that comes alongside it. Um, but now that we have that, we kind of need to do another query. Um, but like before we do that, let's actually try running. Well, it's not going to work perfectly, but we'll run this for each loop. And we'll see what this actually equals. Cool. Ooh. We got our ID now. Look at that. That Azure AD device ID. So again, boop. Oh, backwards. No. Oh. I'm losing. I'm losing my touch. But this right here is where we get the Azure AD device ID now. Um, so we're we're getting pretty far along here already. Um, but there's still more. Because obviously we now need to like add that custom attribute tag to it as well. Um, I might also I also want to add like there are a million different ways to do this. This is just our or I should say my quirky way of just doing it all kind of in one area. Um, nope, this is the only way it can be done. Oh really? Yep. yep. You can't. It's a single line. It has to match line by line. Um, character for character, variable name for variable name. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the next one, you know, we're still going to be doing, uh, the devices, uh, blade. So let me go ahead, grab this, copy that do, 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 cause we're still going to be querying the device. Um, but this time we can do it with the A80 device queue. Ooh. So that's going to act on that specific device based off the device ID, right? Correct. Yes. Um, which again, it's it's fun how you have to do you know the different queries here. But if you want to edit a specific device in Graph, you have to specify the exact ID of that device. Um, so that's why we're doing it there specifically. Oh, so this is why we had to get the AAD device ID from that Intune device. Exactly. So it's a lot of different steps, like you know, to follow this exact process. Um, so that we can eventually add that single custom attribute tag, essentially. Um, but from there, we kind of need to build like the body that we want to send uh, for the next, uh, basically to to add that custom attribute. Um, so we'll go ahead, you know, do our body equals. Now, if I remember correctly, extension attribute was a little bit funny in the way that we had to construct the body. 
Um, does anyone remember exactly what what was up with that? Oh, I think it was a bit nested. I think it yeah, wasn't just like yeah. attribute yeah. one nested equals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nested um, JSON. So um, we can't just directly name. edit extension attribute. Right. Yeah. So normally, like for what we've done previously, like when we edited, you know, that user, we just did like, you know, again, we'll do it with the extension attribute this time. But we just did something like extension attributes equals and then pepcac. Like that's what we wanted to do. But since it's actually a nested um, section, we can't. Yeah, um, so to fix that, we're actually going to do extension attributes equals oh, we're gonna nest it here and we'll do another bracket down here so we have the extension attributes uh like you can think of it almost as an array or a sec like a, the, the nesting bit and inside of that what's nested is going to be the extension attributes and it was extension attributes one because it was the first one attribute one attribute. thank you minus the s um attribute one and i think there was what like 15 of them initially um off the top of my head, we can go that look at the, about right. yeah. at it later too. Um, but now that we've got like we've got that nested essentially, um, working with JSON inside of PowerShell is exhilarating. Um, absolute sarcasm with that. Um, this is something <laughs> that you'll you'll pick up as you go along on certain attributes. Um, it it really just it takes testing all the time, which is why we always say you know do this in. In your dev environment, don't do this in production. I know most people's dev environments is production. Um, go spin up a dev lab. Um, it's really easy to do. We do have another video on the channel on how to do that as well. But uh, and then what? We need to we need to convert that uh, to JSON, yeah, like we did previously. Exactly. So we've got that, and then finally we need to invoke. Another rest method. Method. Now we did gets before. What did we want to do? Now we're time? changing stuff, so it's no. matching. Yeah. Probably should throw that in some quotes. And I just for consistency's sake, I like to do it full caps. And again, we'll follow our consistency here. We had uh, URI. URI three headers and now we're adding in the body of body so if i recall correctly this is the one where we're going to run into like a bit of a an issue with permissions because i don't think we have the one that actually allows us to do the patch but let's go ahead i mean we can we can test it and run it um, so where are we we had that bit there. I'm just gonna run the whole for each loop again. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this just to I'm gonna be that that person. Just to make sure all my data is correct. And then we'll run that loop there. Da, 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 da. Oh, that actually looked like it worked. Potentially. Let's no, go find out. Look. Oh, and I'm in the totally wrong area. We want to go here. Oh, what was that device? Well, it was one of Adam's, yeah? Yeah. I know we've got it in, in, in our Intune side here because we only have so many devices. There it is. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. look at that. Beautiful. Now, I do want to make note, it's really cool that we can do this with devices. Uh, it is not so fun doing it with users. Uh, it, when you do it with users, you've got like the hybrid kind of scenario where it tries to pull things across if you've got uh, things set up, you know, for Azure AD Connect and whatnot. Um, so it gets a little bit messy. The ex there's extension attributes and they've got a, uh, they have a GUID like we were talking about earlier associated with them. But we're not going to delve into that. But just know that as far as like what we've done today, it can only be done on the device side of things, at least relatively easily. Now, I was kind of curious, like I, I could have sworn there was a permission that we were missing um, on that app. So let's actually go back there 
as I struggle through the menus here. Ben is a a wiggle. Wiggle. Oh, see, you you have device. Uh, was it the device management? I thought it was. Yeah, it was one of the read alls, wasn't it? Yeah, it was read write all. Oh, if I remember correctly, it was there were some restrictions. Um, so like when it was a delegated, yeah, I could do. Oh yeah, it was it was this right here. Yeah. So for a delegated permission type, you can only do a read all. If you want to actually write, it actually needs to be directory read write all. That's now, right. Yeah, well, we don't have that um, currently in here because we're doing an application permission. Um, but if you did decide to go down like the delegated approach route, um, just know that you would need directory read write all. Um, but otherwise, since we're doing app based, you can do the device read write all. You can also do device read write all if you'd like to there as well. Um, personal preference. But that's what got that's what got me kind of hung up at one point. I remember that. But I mean, that's that's cool that that's that's got that. I mean, I highly doubt that our uh, group has already updated, but we can go try and check. What did we name this, Johannes? Oh, Wasn't gosh. It like... I have no idea. Just click on refresh. Let's see if we find something. Actually, did you create the group? Yeah, I totally yeah, created the group. Was like AD. Nope. Ah, there you go. This with less than 30 gigabytes of storage. Something totally we memorable. A, Ooh, yeah, who yeah, needs a remember. description field when you have a name field? Right. It looks like it actually already updated for us. We can see there's two devices there. Let's go uh, members list. And let's see. That is alarmingly Ooh, quick. There it Look is. All based on that extension attribute. So there you have it. I mean, you could, you know, theoretically, we could have gone and done, you know, a, a, just a standard group where you manually add your different devices. And we could have looped through, uh, you know, finding the group, first of all, in graph and then looping through and adding the device. But that is so much extra work when we can rely on something that's already just in the portal. Um, I will say. Uh, adding things manually to a group in graph uh, is not as easy as just like grabbing something and adding it. There's a lot more effort involved to it. Um, nonetheless, it can be done. Um, but, you know, I'd rather just rely on what Microsoft has built here uh, for some easy, simple tasks like that. Um, but that's my personal preference. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, I I think unless you're trying to, to automate it across a lot of groups, it's, it's a lot easier to do the simple things the easy way. Mm -hmm. I mean, so theoretically, I mean, we, you know, we applied the custom attribute here and we, you know, in the web page saw that it added our devices. So I think we're actually done. Um, that Ooh. 37 lines, look at that. And realistically, we only added how many here? You know, not many. Not many at all, because we had all this stuff here previously. But that, that was pretty sh short work to get that something works. like that running. Yeah. Um, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But again, you know, this is something that's going to take you a while to figure out exactly like what specific endpoints to look at. You know, research gets involved. But once you start messing with it, it really be kind of becomes second nature and you can really think of like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. I need to do it this way or that way. Um, one important bit that I do want to mention is the way that this script is currently written. I would say only use it in smaller organizations. And I say that uh, because there is a thing in graph called pagination. And when I say pagination, essentially what happens is when you query a specific endpoint like your devices blade or your managed devices section, it's only going to return up to a thousand values. At that point, if there are more than a thousand values, at the very end, you will get a like pagination link that'll take you to the next thousand values. 
So as you can imagine, if you have, you know, 200,000 devices in your organization, there's going to be, you know, like 200 pages that you need to essentially step through. So you, we basically we'll, we'll walk through that, I think, in the next episode. Does that sound good, guys, on how to actually do page? Yeah. Motion? Sounds like an idea. Yeah, maybe some advanced filtering as well. Um, but once we, we walk through that in the next episode, you'll know how to, you know, do the pagination. It's, you'll relatively be able to copy paste of what we end up writing, uh, for pretty much any, uh, you know, endpoint that you decide to hit later on in the future. So you never have to worry about it again. Um, but just something to keep into the back of your minds. Um, that's all I really can think of unless you guys got anything else extra. That's all I have. I think this was a, a lot for one episode of. Yeah, so I hope uh, it wasn't as confusing as the previous one. I know my naming convention probably threw a couple <laughs> people off, but awesome. Good, Jake. Awesome. Very well, good. We'll include the link to the GitHub repo again down below so you can download that example script. Um, I'll go ahead and include this one as well. Obviously, I'll omit um, some things, not that you couldn't copy paste this and it wouldn't work anyway, but we'll omit some of those. Uh, that way, if you want to just copy paste exactly what we've got, it'll make things a little bit easier. Um, but obviously, you know, testing out and failing like we do on a daily basis is how you get to where you need to be at the end of the day. But other than that, thanks for your time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.